sometimes you might have to tie a knot in a piece of rope. Here we're going to look at tying knots in pieces of rope. Hello it's Joe here for Joyrider TV and yes as you might have heard we're going to have a look at knots. So these are what I would consider to be the most useful knots if you're sailing a catamaran, the ones that you're most likely to use and have the most practical applications. So let's just jump straight in. So we're going to start off with the most simple and that is what you could either call a thumb knot or an overhand knot and that might just be what you might call a simple knot like this. This is useful for perhaps in the end of your trapeze rope or um, if you just need to put a simple knot in the end of a rope to stop your hand from slipping off the end. If we're going to go one further with this, which might be good for a stopper knot, perhaps in your traveller rope, or if you need a stopper knot which is a bit more substantial and perhaps a bit easier to untie after it's come under pressure, is a figure of eight knot. So we'll make a loop like this, then we're going to go around the back. There we can see it looks like an eight and then we'll finish that off by putting the tail through the loop. And there we are, a figure of eight knot. Uh, very useful as a stopper knot, many applications. Okay, next, if we need to tie a loop in the rope, we'll use more often than not, we we'll use a bowline. Uh, in German and other languages, it's called a Palsteg. Um, but we'll, the important thing here is the way that you make the loop. So we're going to go right over left. And then we're going to take the end of the rope. Come out through the hole. Around the tree. There's a story about a rabbit here. Back down the hole. And then we'll tighten it. Little finger in the loop that we're making and that's how it should look the bowling very useful for putting a loop in the rope because even after it's been under a lot of load you can untie it quite easily if we turn it over we just push this part and that releases the knot one time not to use a bowling would be if the rope is going to be shaking a lot if it shakes a a large amount like on your jib sheets for example don't use the bowling because after a while that might come undone but if it's under constant pressure then the bowling is good we'll just have another look at that with another piece of rope so here we are we so we're making the loop and then the rope to the right of the loop that is going to be what actually makes the loop which ends up being a loop right over left then we're reaching to the end to find the end and then th the loop is going to be like this so then we're coming out around and back down and then we're going to tighten it by holding on here holding the end and holding here so it's a three-way tighten and then we can just tighten that like that and there it is the bowling. Okay, the next one. If we're tying two ropes of the same size, or if we're tying a rope to, to itself, we can use a reef knot. This would be very useful if you're reefing, would you believe? So we'll start off by crossing the rope over, tying a knot like this, and then what we're looking to do is have both ends coming out either on top or underneath on both sides. So this one's coming out on top. So we just want to put that. So this one comes out on top as well. And there it is, the reef knot. Very useful around the boat park there, especially for reefing. But 
The reef knot can be quite difficult to untie if it has been under a lot of pressure. Although you can use the same technique as we did with the bowlin of pushing the loop there and then we'll be able to untie that. Okay, so if we've got two different ropes and we want to attach them, this might be if we're using a thin strop from the clue of a spinnaker and we want to attach the sheets, then we're gonna use a knot called a sheet bend. So with the thicker rope, we're gonna make the bend and then with the thinner rope we're going to come out go around and then tuck it under itself like this and then we'll pull it tight like this if you're worried about security we can go one better and tie a double sheet bend where we're just going to need a bit more of the thinner rope here we're gonna go around once and twice. And then there is some extra security there. As we pull it tight, it's gonna get really tight and that is pretty secure. Do you want even more security? If the answer is yes, this is actually what we do with our spinnaker strops for the sheets is we do a double sheet bend. This is the most security. And then we'll put a thumbnail, thumb knot in the end. So then there's no chance that this can pull out. Any knots, in fact, if you want extra security, you can put a thumb knot in the end and that will give you that extra security that you're looking for. Okay, the final one we're gonna look at is how we're attaching our trapeze shock cord here. Uh, we've changed, we used to use the sheet bend for attaching our trapeze shock cord, but we've since changed because we want to have a knot in the end of the trapeze rope in case the trapeze adjuster slips then if it gets to the knot, it's not gonna come off the end. So we've got a thumb knot in the end there. Then we're gonna tie a thumb knot in the end of our elastic. This couldn't be simpler. And then we're just gonna tie effectively another thumb knot, but around the rope, making sure the knot is up against the knot and that is up against the knot. And that, is really very secure. It's not gonna come off. It is gonna be difficult to untie if you want to untie it, but that is good, a good level of security, an easy knot to tie. And um, if your trapeze adjuster does slip, it's not gonna come off the end. There you go. Okay, so there we go. Here's the summary of what we've just done. We had, not in order, the bowling, just there. We had, the thumb knot just here, and then the sheet bend or double sheet bend. Then we have, I'm calling this knot the lazy kiter knot. And then we had the figure of eight knot as well. All very useful. If there are other knots that you're using frequently on your boat, then why not just stick them in the comments below so that we can all learn from your experience. Let us know what your favorite knots are and what you use them for, that would be great. So thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been useful and you can always watch back how those knots are tied using the freeze frame button. Or if you go on YouTube, this is an interesting tip. If you go to the settings in the bottom, what would that be? Bottom right hand side of the picture, you can actually slow down the video playback to however fast or slow you want it. And that way you can see these knots being tied at a pace which works for you. But um, I should get out there and tie some knots. Keep your ropes washed as well. If your ropes are getting salty and stiff, they'll be very difficult to tie knots in. So do rinse your ropes. That is another tip. 
Okay, so thanks very much. Thanks to everybody who's been supporting the channel and um, there'll be more coming up soon. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to Joyrider TV and that means you won't miss any of this great stuff as it comes along. Always there's room for you to dig into the archives to find more great stuff there. So do have a dig about in the archives. There's more stuff there, which is great. So have a look. So thanks very much and we'll be seeing you very soon.